Let's put our hands together and bless her real big. Father, we thank you for the word of God. We thank you, Father, for the wonderful change that has come over us. Oh, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Thank you, Lord, for changing us, making us better than what we were before. So we glorify you. We thank you, Father, for loving us beyond ourselves, teaching us how to do this good life that you might receive glory from our lives. So now, Father, I pray that you will engage yourself in the word, cause your word to come alive and be active. None of me, all of you, with clarity, may your people hear your voice from behind the voice of the man of God. It is in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Come on, why don't we give God another thank you? Hallelujah. Praise God. All right, we've been talking about everything moves at the speed of relationships. Write, write that down. Everything moves at the speed of relationships. Now, uh, we're coming into our season of um, a family conference, and uh, we spend a great deal of time each year talking about family and relationships because that's important to the believer to make sure that God is at the forefront, the center of our relationships so that they work and they work well. They work well. Everybody say work well. And, uh, and, and so uh, at the start of these series of messages that will go on throughout the remainder of the year, we, we want to solidify our relationship with the Lord before we jump in to talking about husband-wife relationship, children-parent relationship, you and your boo relationship, and uh, you and your friends. And before we do any of that, we need to solidify uh, what it looks like to have a real, genuine relationship with the Lord. Um, one of the, the, the most difficult parts of pastoring people is, is to get them to a place where uh, they can identify in, a, in the right way where God is concerned. Um, identity in Christ is essential to uh, having confidence and knowing who you are both now and in the future. Uh, the competing boss in the world is to try to get you and I to identify with who we once were when we were in the world. That's the competing boss. That once a person becomes born again, the competition between knowing God and who you are in God will always come from who you used to be when you were disconnected from God. And so the, the starting point for our relationship with God is wrapped up in identity. Identity. If, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. But most people don't know that. So hence, they live based on the course of the old world. So then they, they, they live like they have always lived when they were in the world. So even though they say they, they live based on the flesh. Whatever the body wants, then that's what we, we tend to engage our lives in. And, but then we want results from the relationship we have with God, but we don't identify with the relationship that we have with, with God. So what makes you, Stephen, Pastor Huntley, what makes you different? than other human beings on the planet. The difference between me and somebody who don't know Christ is that I am a spirit, 
born again spirit who live in a body and possess a soul. Meaning, my body don't tell me what to do. I say to my body, when my body's going to have this or have that or have this or have that, just because my body gets hungry doesn't mean I eat. It'll tell me. It'll start growling. Ah! But it doesn't mean that I'm going to respond because my body is not me. I just happen to live in it. When you and I were in the world and lived according to the course of the world, whatever the body wanted, we did it. If it wanted drugs, we gave it to it. If it wanted alcohol, we gave it to it. If we wanted to use profanity and cuss whoever out, we did it. But now that you and I are born again, the competing voice is to continue that behavior, continue down that path that says, whatever the flesh wants, give in to it. Whatever it desires, give in to it. And so in order to do first step, in relationship with God, you have to identify right. You have to know that I'm no longer in the world. I'm no longer of the world. I'm in it, but I'm not of it. And when it's talking about of it, it means being fashioned after the systems that are around you. And, and uh, so I wanted to do this from the uh, start. How about grab a mic? I'm going to have uh, Pastor Leon come up. And uh, Pastor Leon is, is a, a local... Uh, attorney here in, in Montgomery and and I don't have a, a law degree he does and and so I, I can't practice law so I, I can't identify now I can I can practice law but I'm gonna go to jail <laughs> I mean I can do it on my own I'm gonna go to jail uh, but 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 I don't have the credentials that set me apart like he does now, I'm talking to an educated group. I know you're younger and you're more educated. You know, I found out that Bible to most people don't make much sense, but science does. So every now and then I bring some science so you can understand the Bible. So then every now and then I bring some education so you can understand the Bible. Does that, that's what I'm doing now. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So, so, so Pastor Leon, what, what, what qualifies you to identify as an attorney? So, so the first thing that qualifies me is that I've gone through the proper education, four years of undergraduate school, three years of law school, and I've mastered a body of information that now allows me to sit for a bar license. And I passed the bar, and now the, the state and, and the country recognize me as someone who can go into court and represent an individual um, in, in, a, in a particular matter. And that, all of that took you how long to reach that space and place where they gave you whatever, mm -hmm. license, certificate, whatever they gave you, and you walked out the door and said, now nah, I'm an attorney. Took seven years. Seven years, seven years right. to get you from point one to the finish line. Right. All right, now after you got to the finish line and you got hired, do you still have to study? Every day. <laughs> oh, okay, all right, I'll just. Every single day. Uh, that, that's one thing about being a lawyer is, first of all, as a Christian lawyer, you understand that you're there to fulfill a call of God on your life. And so when the Bible says to walk worthy of the vocation in which you're called, that means that I can't just go in and pray about it. I got to go and make sure that my arguments are, are legally sound. So, mm. yeah. so it ain't just, you know, I'm going to pray about it, then I'm going to go in here and tell them what the Lord said. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I wish, but I didn't, <laughs> didn't work that it, way. I get it done. Okay, right. so hence, every day you have to sharpen your craft in order to represent God in that arena and to maintain your job as a, as a great attorney. That's right. Okay, so, so will there ever in your mind, do you ever think you'll reach the pinnacle of your career where you don't have to study? You know, I, I got this. I, I, you know, I, I already know all the laws. Do you ever think you'll get there? Well, the, the reason you can't get there is because laws keep changing. Oh! <laughs> so, so the moment you master the body of law, then the legislator come along and and they'll change the law. The Supreme Court will look at that law and say, no, we, we don't think that's constitutional. So you now have to go back and, and get the framework that they are coming up with um, for, you know, the future. So Any, any recertification? Do you have to be recertified? You, you don't have to be recertified, but the moment you go to court and you talk an old law <laughs> and your client hear it 
and it get out in the community, uh, they won't come back. Oh. So, <laughs> so, you, so you don't have to get recertified, but you have to make sure that you're staying abreast of the new trends and, and even making some of the newer arguments. As you get newer judges to come on, they, they are more open to uh, more liberal arguments. And so you want to be at the forefront and say, Judge, this should be the law okay. opposed to that. So, so there's no re-baptisms. I mean, you ain't got to come back and get dunked in the baptism tree no more. <laughs> you have been dunked already. Right, right. Okay, all right. All you got to do is go out and represent, practice, stay out front, keep doing your educational piece and all of that. Right, right. Okay, all right. right. So, so in, in law, are there promotions that come along with being a lawyer? Do you move from one level to another level right. to another level? Well, in, in America, um, it's a little different than the English system, so you have that kind of of, of system in the English system. But in America, if you go into private practice with a law firm, they typically start you off as an associate. Okay. And then after you have proven that you can be profitable for the company, they'll make you a partner. Okay. The partner now says you're part owner of the firm and that you get a share of whatever the firm bring in, but you also share in the liabilities of that firm. Uh-huh, so, uh -huh. so uh -huh. that, that's a sense of promotion. So, okay, so d can a person go from being a lawyer to a judge? They can. They can. So in, in Alabama, our judges are elected. Okay. So they are, I see a lot of problems with that, but they didn't ask me. Okay. <laughs> but okay. Um, so it becomes a, a popularity contest at, at times. Um, but, but if you want to be a judge, you have to practice for five years, and then you put your name in the hat and you begin running and convincing the rest of the people that you're qualified to be one. So the pinnacle of being a, an attorney would be like Supreme Court justice? Correct. So we can move up. Right. We can go from being a regular church member to preacher. That's right. That's right. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Y'all bless this preacher here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now, if you understood that that simple interview, now I didn't know any of that before I asked him to come up here. Uh, but but if you understand that simple principle, it sort of works that same way in the body of Christ. That when you when you first decide that you want to be a lawyer, you also realize that I got to go to school. That, that I can't illegally do it. Uh, my day when I came up, they called it bootleg. <laughs> Jack leg. You, you just can't, you know, just, I'm up off the street and I'm just going to be. Does that make sense? But you notice that was a, a progression process, progression that came along with all that he talked about. The same way it is in any relationship, especially a relationship with God. That the first day that we, when we meet God, we, we don't know it all. We don't know everything about God. So we, we, we have to get in a position of being taught. And, and I shared with you, uh, especially this age group of people, a few weeks ago, that's, that's one of our ills in, 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 in the millennial generation is, you know, my mama would say to me, not to you, this is my mama talking to me, you just hear my mama's conversation with me, so don't get offended, but, but my mama would tell me stuff like, you think you know everything and don't know nothing. And that's one of the ills of uh, uh, our generation, and in and, 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 and the millennial generation, we have to learn that we, even though we know some things, we don't know everything. And not knowing everything doesn't mean that you are illegitimate. It just means that I've got to spend time with God so that I come to know him and build my relationship out with him properly. It's still going to take you seven years. No matter which way you go around it. No matter which way he goes around it, I'm going to quit and I'm going to go back. I'm going to go over here to this school. It's still going to take you seven. But it's a, it's a keep coming it's a keep coming. It's a keep going. It's a keep going to class and, 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 and keeping all of the, uh, the different distractions out your life so that you can continue on course on where you're trying to go in your relationship with the Lord. We left off last week talking about Nicodemus. We talked about Nicodemus, but I want to share Hebrews 7 and 7 with you first, if we'll get that on the screen. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse number 7. This is... This is uh, 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 a flashback to Melchizedek and Abraham, Abraham being the lesser and Melchizedek being the greater in the relationship. Melchizedek is a type of Christ. It's a foreshadowing of Christ to come. 
And it says this in Hebrews as it writes about that relationship. It says, and without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. Now, this is not talking again about human relationships. It's talking about a relationship between humankind and a great God that we serve. And it's without contradiction that when we accept Christ as our personal Savior, then we who are less, we who are less are blessed because we're with him. Because that you and I are Christians, we're blessed. We're just blessed because we're with Jesus. Blessed because we accepted him. And listen, there was no doing in that work. When you and I got saved, all we did was believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He came into our lives, in our heart, our inner being, and we came alive to him. Now, here we go, back to identity. Now I have to start identifying that I'm with somebody that's better than I am, and I'm blessed because of it. Now that's that identity. But if you don't identify that way, you will think that drugs is better than God. Man, I'm going to get high today. And all you're going to do is go high, and the next thing you know, you're going to crash down. And that's everything that drugs can always offer you is a high for a moment and a crash a, a day later. And it depends on what you take. It may be high for a few minutes and crash the next few minutes. And that's all it'll ever offer you. That's all it'll ever offer you. It, it doesn't have any other uh, outcomes. It don't have any other dividends. But having a relationship with Christ says that no matter what I do with my life, the blessing of God is on my life to give me advantages in this life. That's the identity that you have to have. If you don't have that identity, you'll never ever realize that God has already given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. I said it last week that every person in here that's struggling with finances already rich. You're already wealthy. The problem is, is the second thing we talked about last week, is that in order to know God, you've got to maintain your knowledge base. You heard Pastor Leon just say that a few minutes ago. You can't be a great lawyer in our community and around the globe if, if, if you don't maintain his knowledge base. So when we think about God, we have to think about maintaining our knowledge base. So, so when we think about what God has done for us and what he's doing for us, always say to yourself, i got to have more knowledge of God. More knowledge of God will always equate to greater outcomes. Amen? Amen. Now, if you reject knowledge, the Hosea, if Hosea, uh, what is that, 5? Let me, let me get that right so some people are taking notes here. In, in, in Hosea 4 and 6, if you reject knowledge, now that's something totally different. It's, it's one thing to, you know, say, well, you know, I want to learn more about God. And I want to continue learning and learning so I can grow and grow. But then if you, do, if you borrow in to the people that Hosea was talking about, and, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to know nothing else. You know, last week my example was, uh, you know, smart devices. You, you, uh, if you decide that you want to get a flip phone and all you want to do is dial out and receive calls, you have limited your ability to knowledge. But for some people, that's far they can go. They can't go no further than that. They don't want to go no further. They just told you, I don't want nothing else on my package but to call out and receive a call. But then they get mad because the person standing next to them got a text. They look at you know, your, your, aunt, your aunt just text me. She ain't text me. You forgot. Your knowledge base won't let you get a text. Your knowledge won't let you experience anything greater. So, so you, you have to realize, you have to realize if you cut your knowledge off, if you cut your knowledge of God off at Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want, and that's all you know for the rest of your life, then you, it doesn't mean that God is not greater than that. It just means that you don't, you're not experiencing the knowledge of something greater than that. So knowledge of God is important in order to build your relationship with the Lord. Amen. Nicodemus, Nicodemus, let's take a look at him. I'm going to read this in the, uh, in the Amplified Version. So if you're in the King James, just kind of follow along with us. Amplified just amplifies the text. And, and, and uh, uh, John chapter 3, beginning at verse number 1, let's take a look at a few things. It says, now there was a certain man among the Pharisees named Nicodemus. He was a ruler, a member of the Sanhedrin, which I told you last week, that's, that's uh, equivalent to our Supreme Court. 
He was a, he was a lawyer. That's Nicodemus was a lawyer, and he was a, he was a lawyer among the Jews, who came to Jesus at night and he said unto him, Rabbi, teacher, we know without any doubt that you have come from God as a teacher, for no one can do these signs, these wonders, these attesting miracles that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, unless a person is born again, now in the brackets, unless a person is born again, now what does that mean? What does it mean to be born again? In the brackets, notice that it says, to be born again means to be reborn from above. Now that's key. That's key to proper identification in Christ. The question is whether or not each of us, the, all of us in the room who have confessed Christ, all of us that are in the room that believe we are Christians, the question is, have you been born again from above? Now that's an examining, probing question into your personal walk, but you got to be able to answer that. Now here's how you test that, how you live it. How you're living will tell you whether or not you've been born again from above. How you identify will tell you whether or not you've been born again from a above. So when you think about your life and where you are in your walk with the Lord, the first question you got to ask is, did I get born again from above? Or did I, listen carefully, or did I just join church? That's different. The two are totally different. You know, you know that, 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 that song that you sang back in the day, is your name on the road, and somebody will say, say that, be part, certainly, Lord, certainly, 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 Lord. I'm talking beyond that. I'm not talking about joining church because it's a church. I'm talking, about, I'm talking about having a personal relationship with the Lord. And the first question you have to ask yourself about a personal relationship with the Lord is, have I been born again from, the, from above? Now, what does that look like? Go to the next part. To be born again from the above means that you have to be spiritually transformed. We talked about these three things last week, so I won't go back through them. If you weren't here, go on the internet. It's out there. You can, you can hear the last week's sermon. It says, spiritually transformed, renewed, and sanctified. Now, let me give you a little nugget so you, you kind of identify with whether or not you've been born again from above. So here we go. All right. So spiritually transformed, okay? So when a person is spiritually transformed, that means, listen carefully, that means that they seek God for all their answers in life. That I have been spiritually transformed, so I, in order for me to decide whatever I'm going to do with my life, I'm going to seek God first and wait on God to give me the answer. Well, what does it look like to be uh, non-spiritually transformed? When I don't understand spiritual matters, I go to the palm reader's house. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know it's popular. I know it's popular among young people. Yeah, you go to the palm readers and, you know, such as talk to my boyfriend, I'm going to hex her and all that stuff. That stuff don't work. What you, what you don't realize, you can't curse what's already blessed. <laughs> I'm preaching with my legs crossed right now. <laughs> you, you, can't, you can't curse what's already blessed. All you're doing is taking your money down there somebody fooling you. That's all you're doing. But it's real popular now, the people going to palm readers and all that kind of stuff, because what happens is you, you, you and I get to the place where we don't have our personal relationship with the Lord, so then we got to find somebody that seemed like they got one. And then it costs you a little something. I don't know how much it costs for them to read your palm, but I wouldn't let them read my palm if I were you. I just wouldn't do it. But some people get involved in that. But what it speaks to is that you haven't been spiritually transformed. So your dependency is upon somebody else to be spiritually transformed so that they can find out the will of God for you and not you for yourself. Who is quiet up in here. To be renewed means a refreshing, to, to come alive to. It means a refreshing, to come alive to. That when you are born again from above, you are renewed, reinvigorated, and you have come alive to. 
The realities of what God is calling you to and purpose for your life. And then the last one is to be sanctified. To be sanctified means to be set apart. To be okay that you are born again. To be satisfied with the fact I am born again. I'm not worried about, you know, somebody talking about me. Well, he, you know, he a preacher. I'm going to tell you I'm a preacher. You ain't got to tell me. Well, he a preacher? Yeah, I am. You know, I walk in the store. People, they play games. People, you'd be surprised how many games people play. I walk in the store. I already know they know me. They done been the truth about seven times. They done seen me. Somebody, don't I know you from some way? <laughs> really? <laughs> That's the best you got. <laughs> All right. <laughs> mm -hmm, I'm him. That's, I'm the guy. I own it. I'm, I'm not, don't hide it. Don't hide it. We who are believers, we have to accept the fact that when God, when we accepted God as our personal Savior, we made him our Lord, and now we, it's okay to be who you are. You are known it. Live like it. You are graced. Live like it. You have the blessing on your life. Live like it. You don't have to be shamed for nothing. Because he set you aside as a representative of his kingdom. Now watch this. He says to Nicodemus, he says, now if you're not spiritually transformed and not renewed and you're not sanctified, you, us, we cannot ever, you're going to use that word ever twice, in the brackets, twice. He cannot ever see and experience the kingdom of God. Now he said something. Because there's a lot of things about the word of God that we want to experience, but we don't experience them. Why? Because we have not been, watch this, spiritually renewed, transformed, and sanctified from above. That's the only way you're going to see it manifest in your life. That when you need, God, I need a breakthrough. And the breakthrough come, watch this, it's a result of your relationship. It's not because you prayed 12 times. It's because of your relationship with the Lord. That his blessing is on your life. And that breakthrough happens because you realize, Lord, I sought you first, and the answer came because I sought you first. And I had to try to work it out and try to figure it out and try to figure out a way to, you know, rob Peter to pay Paul. I had to figure none of that out because when I prayed to you, I knew you were going to give an answer. I knew you were going to break me through. I knew you were going to bring me out. I knew you were going to make me an overcomer. Yeah. And he goes on. Watch this. He says this to to him, he says this, go to the next part, verse, verse 4, I guess. Go to the next part. Okay, Nicodemus said unto him, listen to what Nicodemus said. He says, how can a man be born when he is old? He cannot enter his mother's womb and be born a, a second time. Then he goes on to the next part. Can he? And, 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 and Jesus, as I said last week, Jesus said, really, man? Really, Nicodemus? Now, y'all did... Y'all did see that Nicodemus was on the Sanhedrin council, right? And so Jesus was like, Nicodemus, as smart as you are, you're going to ask me such a question. As, 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 as much as you know about law and about the laws of Moses, and, and you're going to ask me about going back into your grown man, going back into your mother's womb and be born again, how could you even think about that, Nicodemus? Then he goes on, he says this. He says, I assure you and most solemnly say unto you, unless one is born, listen carefully, church, of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Now I want you to go back, if you will, on the screen, go back to the A part of the verse. Now watch what he says. He says two things. He says, in order to signify that you are identifying with Christ, the number one thing you got to do, you got two things that has to happen. Number one, you have to be born of the water. Now, baptism is not about uh, uh, eternal life. Baptism is about, watch this, listen carefully, I call it, it's about the rite of passage. Meaning, you accept Christ, you're born again. Now, we become baptized in Jesus' name or in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, whichever one, that's no dispute. They both mean the same thing. All you got to do is just go in the water. They take you out in the water, that water great, bring you back out. It don't matter who did it. 
It don't matter who did it. It don't matter if the preacher did it. It don't matter if Jojo did it. It don't matter who Kirk did it. Go down in Jesus' name, come up out of there in Jesus' name. Does, does that make sense to you? But you have to do that before you start singing in the choir. You do that before you get a ministerial license. You do that before you start parking cars. You do that before you go on TV talking about I'm the super evangelist from True Divine. No, 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 no. You, you go through the watery grave before you start identifying and representing Christ. Everybody say step number one. So if you haven't been baptized, if you haven't been baptized, this is a great Sunday for you to come down after, after service today and accept Jesus Christ and get baptized. That's first step with that relationship with Christ. Amen? Now, for all of you that have been baptized, don't, don't, don't get on the list. You've been baptized already like seven times. Don't, don't get, no, you, you done done enough. Don't put your name on the list. You, you already been, you've been in the water a lot of times. And baptism ain't what you need. You need this second thing. You don't need to be dunked no more. You already got enough dunking. All right, now what you need is the second part. Everybody say, you know how people say they come back first of the year. Pastor, you know, they come back the first of the year. They've been out all year to come back the first of the year. After the first Sunday, they say, well, what you come for? I want to be baptized. Again? <laughs> and and, 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 and what, they, what they realize is that they realize they're empty, but they think it's in baptism. Because listen carefully, this is as far as, watch this, the traditional church has taken us. The emphasis when I grew up was on, you got to get baptized. They didn't teach me be part. So I was always dependent on the church to always baptize me. So I go out and jack it up for six months, and then the first of the year come back, say, all right, Rev, I'm coming back. You come walking down. Sit in the chair and you say, sign, put your name on the list. Oh, that's a sixth time. And it's not baptism, it's what you need. You've done that. What you need is be part. Unless you are born of the water and of the what? Say it, church. Spirit. The Spirit. Unless you're born of the water and the Holy Spirit. Now think in context of Holy Spirit outside of what you've seen in church. You know, you know, people, people say all kinds of stuff. You know, you go to churches and, you know, some people think they got, you know, a trademark on the Holy Ghost. You know, I go to the holiness church and you won't wear my skirt all the way down to the ground. That holiness folk pick them skirts up. I'm telling you now. Oh, don't worry about this. Y'all don't worry about that. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it ain't in no skirt. It ain't in wearing no makeup. Some of some people need makeup. You hear me? Oh, my bad. I wasn't supposed to say that either, was I? <laughs> and it's not in any of that. It's not in no dance. It's not in walking on pews. It's not in any of that. That's not Holy Ghost. That's black folks showing out. Now, when you take all of that away, because in your mind, you just like me. If I got to do that to get the Holy Ghost, I ain't getting the Holy Ghost. I, I ain't going to do the break dance across the floor, none of that stuff. And the Holy Spirit does none of that. That's just, that's just us. You know how us this is. is. You know, it's like family reunion. That's just, that's just us. And for some people, they, they, they got to take a lap around the room. Some people, they, they got to lift a hand, shout. Everybody ain't as loud as I am. And because you're not as vocal and verbal, doesn't mean you're not full of the Holy Ghost. The moment that Jesus came into your life, he gave you the Holy Spirit down on the inside, and all you got to do is just receive him. Yeah. And most of us as believers, we've been spooked out of the Holy Spirit. We've been spooked out of his ability to help us and to function in our lives. And I'm going to say to you, millennials, you're going to need the Holy Ghost. You're going to need him. This world that you guys growing up in, oh, my God, in order to represent Jesus, you're going to need the Holy Ghost functioning on the job. You're going to need him at the Walmart. You're going to need him in the neighborhood. You're going to need him with your children at school. You need the Holy Ghost. Woo, glory be to God. And so the absence of accepting and receiving the Holy Spirit only makes you, I'm going old school on you now, it only makes you a wet Christian. 
Some of y'all get that Wednesday of next week. The absence of him means that you did A part, but you didn't go through the B part. I preached for years not knowing that the Holy Spirit was important to the ministry. My pastor, when I grew up, my pastor told me, you know, don't be reading them Acts and Pauline letters about the Holy Ghost. Don't read that, boy. We do Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And that's all we do. And I'll be telling the pastor, look at all these signs and wonders and miracles. And my pastor's like, no, 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 we don't do that. And it was only until I left church relationship and got my own personal relationship that I did the second part of the text. So here, here I want you to know, your church believes that the Holy Spirit is essential and important. So you don't have no shackle on you. You don't have no shackle. You are already filled with the Holy Spirit. Now you have to now build a relationship with him. And stop saying stuff like, you know, some told me. You're a believer. There's no another thing speaking in your head. Now that you are a believer, it's the Holy Spirit share that with me. And you say, oh, Lord, thank you for sharing that with me. And I believe you and I receive. I know exactly what to do now. And as you build that relationship with the Holy Spirit, don't say stuff like, my second mind told me. Y'all, y'all, my first mind told me. Ain't no second or no first mind. It's the Holy Spirit. You're a believer. The Holy Spirit is in you, and he's speaking to you. He's speaking on the inside of you so that you'll know right paths, make right decisions, have words of wisdom, words of knowledge, insight, revelation. And if you will acknowledge that relationship, the relationship gets so much better. I like to say it gets gooder and gooder. Gooder and gooder, praise God. All right, so let's look at some things. Let's look at some things so that you understand. So we get baptized. We become born again first. We get baptized. And watch this. We receive the Holy Spirit. When I say receive, he's already in you. To receive means you acknowledge and you start walking by his guide. I acknowledge he's in me. Now I, I ask the Lord, Lord, help me to hear the voice of the Spirit. And then I wait for him to say, if you don't say nothing, don't do nothing. You don't do nothing. You don't, you know, if your mama, you, you and your mama at the house cooking, y'all gonna cook a, a cake or whatever, and, and, and your mama, your mama say, all right, bring out a couple eggs, you bring out a couple eggs. You don't start going and get no flour and all that because she ain't told you the next thing to do. Because she ain't ready for all that. She just wants you to get the eggs out. And your responsibility is just stand there at the stove. <laughs> don't turn no eyes on, don't turn the oven on, don't do none of that. Because if you do, what you gonna get? Some of y'all are like, y'all just too young. They don't, they, these didn't get no whoopings. They ain't get no whoopings. They got spanking. I understand. I, I understand. But in my generation, that's a good old-fashioned whooping now. My mama come in the kitchen and say, boy, you gonna burn the house down. You don't ever go back in the kitchen ever again. You're like, uh-uh, I ain't going in that one. That's a setup. <laughs> So I thank God the way y'all raised. Y'all were raised well, praise God. <laughs> All right, so we don't do anything else after we hear that voice of the Lord. The Lord tells us, then we obey him. Once we, once we hear from him, then we obey what his promptings are in our, in our inner man. All right, so let's look at some things concerning the spirit. He said, that which is born of the flesh, listen to this carefully, this is important. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. In the brackets, notice what it says. The physical is merely physical. Okay? Remember a few minutes ago I told you about you and I, I think I re referenced myself, that you and I are born again spirits living in bodies possessing a soul. Soul meaning personality, what distinguishes us from the identical twin. Okay? All right. So you and I are spirit beings. That's who we genuinely are, spirit beings. The physical is our, our body. This is the physical. Okay? The moment that a person passes away, for instance, if I died right now, boom, I die, my body will go to the ground, my body will go to the ground, but me, Stephen, will step outside my body because I'm spirit. Does that make sense? All right. The moment that my wife gathers up my body, take it down to wherever they're going to take it, watch this, the moment that I die, I am not my body. You got to get that in order to understand who you are. Remember, we talked about a front identity. So you and I 
are not physical bodies. We are spirit, spiritual beings living on the inside of the body. Everybody ready? All right. So the flesh, which is the physical, it, it, the, the physical is merely physical. And that which is born of the spirit is what? All right. So notice he separates that there's a physical world and there's a spiritual world. Okay? There's a physical world and a spiritual world. The physical world is tangible. Many of us as Christians, that's all we know. All we've ever experienced is the tangible world that is around us. So we don't know how to relate to the spiritual world. We call it spooky and, you know, you know, especially when God reveals something to you, people start telling you stuff, you tell them, you say, well, the Lord showed me such stuff. Man, don't you tell nobody that. They, they think you're crazy. Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with me. I just have the ability to see in the spirit realm. Okay, did everybody ready? All right, so now watch this. He says, and that which is born in the spirit is spirit. Go to the next part, verse 7. Do not be surprised that I have told you you must be born again. That is, reborn from above, spiritually transformed and renewed and sanctified. Now watch this. this I love this part about Jesus. It's, it's, it, you know, when you read the Bible, you have to kind of put uh, you know, human interaction in it to fully understand it. And, and so uh, Nicodemus is kind of like me. And that is, if you, if, if you walk down and you, you told me something like, you know, something like crazy, like off the wall, like, you know, like sometimes I, I'll get little kids, they'll tell me, they'll come down and say, you're the shortest preacher I've ever seen. <laughs> and and I, can't, I can't do stuff like, oh, baby, go on, baby. <laughs> It'll be all over my face. It'll be like, what you just said, little child? <laughs> I'll say stuff like, I'm, I'm taller than you, though, ain't it? <laughs> Nicodemus was just like that. Nicodemus wore it all on his face. He was, he was so shocked that Jesus would, would say something that he didn't know because he was such an intellectual. This guy was intelligent. And that Jesus would come and say something so simple and Nicodemus was looking at Jesus like, are you for real, dude? And he was all over his face. And so Jesus said to him, don't act like you've been blown away because I told you that you've got to be born again from above. If you had been reading the scriptures properly, you would have seen in the scriptures that you were going to have to be born again from the law anyway. And I think sometimes people allow themselves to get so much education that they're all natural and have no spiritual well-being. I dropped the bomb up in this camp. Nothing wrong with being educated. You're supposed to be. You're supposed to have knowledge. You're supposed to be smart and intelligent and wise. You're supposed to be. But you should never let that hamper your ability to grow spiritually. I said something. That deserved more than three claps. Now, this is what he says. Jesus says, the wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it's going. Now, hold that right there, verse 8. Right, go, go, let me read the, the last part of verse 8. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Now, go back up to that part of verse 8. Now, notice what it says. The wind blows where it desires, and you hear the sound, but you do not know whether it comes or it's going. Now, you have to, when you read that, you say to yourself, but that, that's not true. But it is true in his day. So it's not true in our day because we have barometers. Meteorologists, they, they have barometers to be able to measure whether or not it's a south wind or east wind or tornado, okay? But in Jesus' day, we didn't have no barometer. So the example that Jesus was using was saying to them that everything that is born of the natural is natural, but if until, watch this, until you understand spiritual things, you, the, the wind is a representation of the Holy Spirit, and that is you can't see it with the natural eye. What God has intended for our lives, you don't see that with the natural eye. It's spiritually discerned, and you have to be born of the Spirit in order to understand it. And that's what Jesus is telling Nicodemus. Nicodemus, God has a whole nother way of dealing with humankind, and a part of that dealing with humankind is to deal with him based on the Holy Ghost. And you have to be born of the Holy Ghost in order to understand it. Amen? Amen. All right, let me give you one other scripture, and I'm going to let you go. 1 Corinthians chapter number 2 and verse number 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse number 10. 
Okay? I want you to listen to this real quickly because this is going to help you to be able to go home and begin to build your relationship with the Lord. Begin to build your relationship with the Lord. Now watch this. Go to verse number 9. I have to read that part. It says, But it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have it entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for who? Come on, everybody read that. What did it say? Let me see your hand if you love Jesus. Come on, let me see your hand. Love Jesus. Everybody ought to hand up. Even the sinners. Put your hand up, sinner. You love Jesus. Everybody hand ought to be up. All right, thank y'all. All right, so notice what it says. I haven't seen, ear haven't heard, neither have they entered into the heart of men the things that God has prepared for those that love him. We all raised our hand, didn't we? So how do you get the manifestation of things that God has prepared for me? We keep reading. Watch what it says. God, but God hath revealed them unto us how? See, when you don't do the second part of your step in salvation with Christ, what happens? When you don't have the Holy Spirit, you can't see what God intended for your life. Woo, glory to God. I feel like running now. He says, but God hath revealed them unto us by how? By his Spirit. So every day God is trying to reveal to us his intentions, his goals, his strategies, and his plans for our lives. But unless you have a relationship with the Spirit that's on the inside of you, you and I will be in the dark. You, you've, been, you've been praying about promotion, but you've been asking everybody else what they did to get promoted. I dropped one more bomb up in here. Instead of asking the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, what are the steps I need to do to get my resume in alignment with promotion? I did say resume, didn't I? You can't just walk in there and tell me, give me a raise. That don't work. You're going to get fired. You need to go through a process. What, what is the process? Holy Spirit, reveal to me the wisdom that it takes to get the new job. Maybe, 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 maybe I need to, I don't, you know, Pastor, I don't wear no suit, but maybe you need to wear one to this interview. Well, you know, I don't like that collar all around my neck. You just talking one hour. Maybe that's what the Holy Spirit is saying. Maybe that's what makes the difference. Maybe when the people met behind the, the closed doors, they said, we want candidates that's willing to dress up in a suit rather than casual dress. But you wouldn't know that except you had heard from the Holy Ghost. But God got great promises, but we've been missing the second part. No relationship with the Holy Spirit, so we don't know the mind and the will of God. Then he goes on, he says, for the Spirit, the, the Spirit searches all things, yes, even the deep things of God. For what man, what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of a man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Go to the next part. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world. I got to stop right there. As much as I won't let you go, I can't let you go without talking about that. He says, he says, we have not received, we, we, have, we have received not the spirit of the world. Now think about that. When you think about how you live your life, you know, I, I, I see people all the time, you know, these different little shows on TV. Y'all do know these shows for entertainment, right? <laughs> Let me say it over again. Y'all do know these shows are for entertainment. You know, when, when those, those ladies pulling every, everybody the wig off and all that kind of, you're not supposed to do that in front of Walmart. <laughs> That's entertainment. But if you adopt that way of life, you, you're always going to be running around fighting everybody. And then you'll be crying in the car talking about, well, I'm supposed to be saved, but I don't know why I did that, because you've adopted the spirit of the world. See? And if you adopt the spirit of the world, you can't have that, watch this, the outcomes from the relationship with the Lord. Notice what he says, but we have not adopted the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is what? Oh that we might know the things that are what? Free. They're free. <laughs> free. 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 And, 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 and you're struggling you're struggling trying to maintain friendship with your friends. Why? Being friendly is free. Pastor, it's your heart. Well, change them three friends out with somebody they hard with. 
but friendly is free. I, 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 I wish I could be your friend just to show you what a friend's like. I'm an easy friend. It don't matter to me what you're doing, how you're doing, who you're doing with. It don't matter to me. I'm your friend. I'm your friend. I don't come with no heaviness. I don't want you to do nothing from me. You know, I hope you don't have to be doing it either. But, you know. <laughs> but I just want to be your friend. That's it. Just, just be your friend. That's Pastor Hill. Pastor Hill and our friends, and we're easy friends. Easy. Until we play basketball. But easy. Easy friends. Friendships, watch this, it's born out of God. That's why he said, if any man wants friends, you don't have to, you ain't got to want them. But he says, if any man wants friends, he must first. See how y'all know the Bible? But then we see you on Facebook. See, he must show himself to be friendly. And that's the work of the Holy Spirit. It's the work of the Holy Spirit to be a genuine person about people. Because every, everybody is not likable. We, you're going to go to work with some folks tomorrow that you left Friday saying, I don't know about them people that boy. But you still got to go work with them tomorrow. And at some point, you got to stop faking like you like them and say, this is my co-worker, and that's all they are to me is my co-worker, and I can work with them in this environment. But that's the work of the Holy Spirit. That's getting up every morning and say, Lord, I... I'm going to tell you, Lord. Last Friday when I left there, Lord, I didn't tell you, but Lord. You ever had a prayer like that? You didn't know what to say. You said, Lord. And the Lord already know your heart. The Lord said, okay, all right, I'll fix it. I'll fix it. I'm already working. I'm working on your part in you, and I'm working on that part in them so the environment will be better. I don't want you to quit because that's why I sent you there. I sent you there because two years from now, I got a younger person as a college student that's going to come in, and they're going to attach to you, and you're going to grow them up in the things of God. Things are going to happen in their life, but you're going to be their recovery source. That's why I'm putting you there. I ain't putting you there just for a check. I'm putting you there for a purpose. <laughs> Woo, glory be to God. All right, let's keep reading. I got I to gotta let you go. I got to let you go. I got to let you go. Come on, come on. Which things also we speak, not in the words of which man, which man teaches, but that which the Holy Ghost teach. We compare spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of, of the Spirit of God, for they are what? Now, for everybody in the room that's been talking about me this whole sermon, he down there talking about, I need to take that second step. I got baptized, that's enough. Now you see why it don't make sense to you. The reason why it don't make sense to you is because you think that what I'm saying is foolishness. It's hard to understand spiritual things when you think that spiritual things is foolishness. So you got to right identify and know that, you know, God sent the man of God to speak the word of God and I got to be open to receive it. And you, you ain't got to understand it all. You just got to know the man of God is speaking to me and I, and I can't understand it all. But when I go out the door, Lord, reveal to me what I couldn't understand. And he'll reveal it to you by your by his spirit. And the next thing you know, you start growing and you start understanding spiritual things all because you stop seeing the Bible. You stop seeing the word of God as foolishness. And you stop buying into the notion with all these people saying in the world, you know, the Bible old. I agree with them, it is. It's ancient. But it's still relevant. Still relevant. He says, he says, for they are foolishness unto him, and neither can they know them. Next part. Because they are what? How are they discerned? Is there another one? Is there another verse? But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is, is judge of no man. Go back up to verse 14. Verse 14, if you will. It says, okay, go back down. I'm sorry, 15. I'm sorry. 15. But he that is spiritual judges all things. I, I need to go back to 14. That part, right? Go up one time. Up one time. Up. There you go. Because they are what, y'all? They are spiritually discerned. Now listen to me, people of God. If you know that the time that you got baptized, you didn't mean it. And it's okay. It's okay to, to get baptized and mean it. A lot of us did that. A lot of us did it. It's okay. But today you get an opportunity to come down because you decided that I want to do the first step. I want to be baptized 
Jesus name name the Father Son Holy Ghost whichever way you decide to do it we want I want to be baptized I want to take that first step in Christ and I want to re, rededicate my life in such a way that I'm on the right path in this thing and then secondly I'm going to receive the Holy Spirit he's in me I just need to receive him and receive his instruction and his direction for my life and that's what I want to do and then watch this then you go out wherever you go home in your neighborhood or to the supermarket you go and you live as God shows you how and every day he gonna teach you a little bit more and 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 the next thing you know, you're going to be up here preaching for some of y'all. Some of y'all going to be up here singing. You're going to say, well, what? I don't want Pastor, I've been sitting in the back. I've been sitting in the middle. And Pastor, I, I would just come here at nine then. And next thing you know, you start to see God got a purpose for me and a plan. And you start to hear God speak to you. And you start, ooh, I ain't know God talking like that. That's what God wants. He's freely given us all things. So we can enjoy and do this life. But it starts by receiving him as the highest and final authority in your life. Amen. Y'all receive it today? Well, come on, give our great God a big thank you for it. Amen. Stand to your feet, if you will. Our prayer team is, is coming to the altar. If you have a desire to be born again, that is to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, what I want you to do is just gather your things. Gather your family if you have to and just come on down and let us pray for you. We want to introduce you to Christ. Secondly, if you want to rededicate your life, what does rededication mean? That I, I have been born again before, but I, I turned away from God and now I want to come back to God. I want to rededicate my life. Thirdly, you're in the room and you say, Pastor, I want to take the second step. I want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I want the Holy Spirit operating and functioning in my life to the extent that I can hear the voice of God. And if that's you in the room, come on down. We want to pray for you. And then, then fourthly, if you want to join this church, if you want to be a member of True Divine, you come on, bring your family on. We're so glad that God sent you to us. We're so glad you, God added you to us. True Divine is so much better because you came. All because you came, we are better because you came. And then lastly, I can't articulate everything God is saying to you and what he has said to you. But here's what I do know. If you want us to pray with you about what God has spoken to you today, come on down. Gather your things. Come on down. Let us pray, pray for you about your specific areas where you have your specific needs. I'm going to give the benediction now and after which the altar will be open. Our prayer team will remain here. And if you just want to ease on down, you can. They'll be here. If you get, if you get to your car, and you say, man, I need to get back to the altar. They'll be here. Just cut your car off and come on back. We want to pray for you. We want to, want to love on you and show you the will of God for your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Will you lift your hands for the blessing? May the Lord bless and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord always make you head, never the tail. May the Lord bless you abundantly. May the Lord release ministering angels to go before you, especially for those that are heirs of salvation. May the Lord make you always to triumph in all that you do. May the Lord be gracious unto you and show you his peace. And may the Lord prosper you in everything that you touch. May it blossom, flourish. May it bloom. May it always operate in the overflow. I command this blessing over you and your household to the extent that I can declare over your life and the life of your family that all is well. All is well with you and your house. All is well on your job. All is well with your relationships. All is well with your children. All is well with your finances. I declare over your life, all is well in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, why don't we give God a big thank you. God bless you. Have a great Sunday afternoon. I'm going to ask that uh, travelers, travelers rest. If you, if you guys will come to my right, if you'll come to my right, if you'll come to my right. They're going to show you back to the restaurant area.